Hey guys, welcome to another video on Stage 3 Entertainment. I am Julian. It's your boy James. And today we're going to be spoiling, and I mean spoiling, the latest MCU movie and probably the biggest pop culture thing we had since 2012, um, Avengers Endgame. This is basically the final installment of the Infinity Saga. Well, not the final installment. The, it's the final it's installment. It's the final installment, but Spider-Man Home, Far From Home is like the epilogue, but... Anyways, this is the final chapter of the Infinity Saga. Um, it wraps up everything that happened with in, I mean, with Infinity War. So, letting you know now, this is your spoiler warning. You have been warned. We are about to go deep dive into spoilers about this film. We're going to talk about storylines and probably the future of the MCU at this point now. So, if you have not seen it, I highly suggest pausing this video. Go watch Endgame and coming back to it. But what I suggest is turn the volume all the way down. Minimize the video so we still get a view on YouTube <laughs> and then can watch it again after you've seen Endgame. Okay, fair enough. We'll do that. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Um, before I go, what was the biggest takeaway or what was something that you were excited to see when you watched Endgame? Um, excited to see or like happy when I saw it. Happy when you saw it. Let's start there. Because the thing I probably freaked out the hardest is um, Cap calling Mjolnir. Yes. That was like the scene where I lost my shit because I, like everything else was a lot of like fan service to previous um, movies. movies so that's yeah. pretty much, this was like a love letter to the whole franchise really. But that specific scene, I was so happy for. Um, Finally was worthy. And then he just worked it. Well, I mean, he's been worthy because the whole concept of like, because it, it calls back to Age of Ultron where like he nudges the hammer and the whole thing is either you're worthy or you're not. Like, it's it's black or white. You're not like, you're kind of worthy of Mjolnir because it's either you are or you're not. And the fact that he not only calls it, but then just strikes Rex, up lightning through the ground. Rex, Rex Thanos. Yeah, he and got was, that work. I was so, so excited seeing that. Um, I've been waiting for that moment since Ultron. I've been mm. literally waiting for Captain America to go pick up that hammer and wield it. And he finally did. And I was like, yeah um that was an awesome moment um the only one fan service well not one fan service one thing that i didn't like two things were professor hulk i i don't know how i feel about that because i liked it but i hated it because it, it they, they did it well they did but hulk does really nothing in this movie right that's down. that's where my issue comes in like professor hulk the professor is what his real his kind of name is in the comics um, the Professor, even though he's the Hulk and Banner together, at least the Professor Hulk can still be able to do certain things. And he was able to show you that, hey, even though I can't get as angry as I usually can, I still can be the Hulk and I still can be able to wreak havoc. And it's like this film, he doesn't really do anything but just minor calculations and, and just the, go about that. The initial snap back, that's about all he does. Yeah, that's um, the only two things that Hulk really do. And I, I don't know, there's no probably real point in going in-depth about the story of, like, the whole, like, scene-by-scene -scene thing. Because, I mean, if you're watching this, you most likely saw the movie. Yes. Um, so there's no part of probably going, like, We're not going to go through the entire... Yeah, we're not going through the entire story. Um, yeah, uh, so, yeah, the, the professor was... Like, he was funny, uh, especially, like, the first time you really see him when they're... Hey... He, he, dab, dab. <laughs> I was like, all right, Hulk. And then the whole Say thing green. between him and Ant Man. That yeah. was that was that was with funny. him talking about like, just oh, take the picture, take the goddamn phone. <laughs> uh, I also like that some things like when they're at that breakfast. There's a huge breakfast plate. Like there's a whole giant bowl of eggs, giant burritos and stuff because the Hulk has to eat a crap ton of food. So. Yes. So I I enjoyed that, but one thing that I think I'm the the. Um, the, the the minority in this one is the fact that uh, I did not like Fat Thor. Uh, I thought it, so. I didn't like Fat Thor until the end because I thought Thor, when he like gets his Thor gear on and has his like beard and hair braided, that to me is like what an actual like Viking looks like, like yes. these fat dudes and stuff like that. I thought it looked cool there. The, I will say the reason I hated it the first time. First time I saw this th movie, it was at a Regal and not an Alamo. And the, there was people laughing behind me every single time Thor came on screen. Like the first two times, you know, it's funny because you see him like, the first time you see him in general, it's pretty funny. Then you see him um, like sneaking through Asgard past Loki. It's pretty funny then too. 
literally every time he was on screen, they would just snicker. And I'm like, <laughs> like shut up. Yeah, like, how is that joke still use, useful on you? Like, the part where the three of them are rolling up on Thanos, they're still laughing. And, like, he gets his gear on, he walks up with the uh, Stormbreaker Mjolnir, still laughing. I'm like, how is this... I, I'm, I'm glad your mind is so simple that a joke can be said 5,000 times and you think it's as it's funny, so funny as the first, as the first time. time. And that's my only Ooh. thing. And the other thing is, it's just, for his character journey... Um, throughout the entire, not the entire MCU, from Thor Ragnarok to now, he has been saying that he wants to be the God of Thunder. He wanted to be this person. He wanted to learn about how he could be powerful. And now all of a sudden it's like, yeah, I don't want to be that guy. I just want to be a mortal. Well, so I think he's not challenged anymore. That's the whole thing. They killed Thanos. Okay. So there's nothing to do anymore for that point. He served so, his purpose, yeah. basically. Um, so, I, yeah, I mean... They're, they're, I will say, my big gripe, and I've gone off in depth about it to multiple people, is the time travel. <laughs> the time travel logic does not make sense. And Johnny and I were talking about this, and I'm, I was going to talk to you about it. I wanted to wait until we talk about it now. Yes, of course, if you have seen any game, yes, there is time travel. The quantum realm is being used as a time capsule so they can go travel back in time to get the Infinity Stones to undo what they do because, of course, Thanos destroys the stones after he decimates everything um i agree with you because the time logic doesn't make sense because literally you're right thor says i'm not thor uh the professor says hey whatever you do in the past will not affect our future mm -hmm. so you like what don shield tries to say or war machine says let's go in the back and just like kill thanos and call it a day mm -hmm. it's like nah you can't really do that because it won't change what happened it to won't us. change what happened to us it's not so, back to the future roles so the thing is is johnny put it as a great point and how you put it off as a great point was imagine that there's a line mm -hmm. um i'm gonna see if i could do this in the video but we'll see there's imagine a line right here right this is point a this is point b so what we're doing is from this point is we're gonna take something from this point or this point and bring it to our point so we can make mm -hmm. it to our effective. Whatever happens in that time is not gonna affect the timeline that's already been set. What it's gonna do is branch off something that has completely happened in the other sets. So for instance, like what happens, and again, I, like Bruce says, don't mess with things, but you still do. So accidentally, in 2012, Loki gets saved. So that's a brand new timeline no matter what. Loki escapes, Loki escapes the, through space through the gem. space jump. Next thing happens, I think this is a thing. Uh, Captain America uses the Mind Stone against Captain America when he's trying to get the Mind Stone, so that's another branch. The other other thing was Thor the Dark World. We, this is, we're just speculating if Captain America is a good person because he takes all the gems and put them back into the separate time lapse. Thor took Mjolnir. He puts it back, though. Do we really know that though? Cap, it's on the the pad when Cap goes back with all the stones. True, but that that doesn't mean that he could have done it. I mean, he doesn't come back with it. He's old and dead. I mean, he's not old and dead, but he's old. I don't need. I mean, I'm old. assuming he took that back when he put the stone back with it. Okay, because he had to go back to Asgard. He had to go back to Asgard. Okay. Then the other thing was in 2014, you make a whole new timeline. The fact that Thanos went back in back in the future, well, went, to the future went to the future yeah. to go battle everybody. So that means Thanos. There's not a Thanos There's a branch anymore. where Thanos is dead. Right. Yeah. And Thanos is not there anymore, so what threat does the Avengers have now? They're good. So that's that's what I mean by, like, it messes with its own rules. <laughs> they they do a bad way of describing it, because it, it's the same way Dragon Ball Z does it. So if you're familiar with Dragon Ball Z, yes. Trunks comes to our timeline to warn them about the androids. When he goes back, he's going back to his line. So it's like you could say it's a branch and he's living in this branch. He's coming back here and this is the line we see, but he's always going to go back to that branch when he goes to the future. It's easier to think about it as parallel timelines. So it's like you have three lines. We're in this one. They go back to this one's to get the stones. And then they come back, use them here, and they put them back here. And everything they do is also going to make a different line. Because like something I talked about, it, it all is acceptable to make sense until we get to the point where Cap is old and arrives in our timeline. Right, that really did not make sense. Because it, if he were to go back and live in the past, he'd be living in a timeline that has two Captain Americas, which would be a branch or a separate line. So he should never reappear in ours 
unless he uses pin particles to warp back. But he doesn't he warp back. He doesn't again. because he would appear on the pad. You can't. It's not just the pin particles. You need to come back on the pad because that's the actual gate. Um, and someone tries to say, well, no, there was always two caps. We just never saw the other one. I was like, okay, but he still goes back in time and steals Captain America's shield because there's only that one shield. So that would still create a splintered timeline because or that timeline. Or he got how to make him another shield. We don't know. But how it, he has to stay secret. He, Howard can't know he exists. You're right. Well, Peggy knows he exists. Peggy's gonna be like, hey, can I get a Captain America shield for no reason? Plus, they didn't have enough, uh, they didn't have any more vibranium. He literally says this is all the but vibranium Claw, we have. But Claw takes more vibranium in the 70s. Okay, but when's Howard die? And how, if, Howard dies in 91. Well, he, he, wait, he takes more in the 70s, but I don't think they get it. I mean, he could. Because otherwise, they would just make more stuff out of vibranium. I don't know. There's it, like I said, you got to take leaps on well, some and, of that time and, logic. And there was a Q and A that po uh, appeared on Reddit, and Joe Russo says the official answer is that he warped back, which bullshit. <laughs> I still enjoy the movie, but that part irked me so bad because it all was perfectly fine with the time travel stuff. Nebula killing her past self, them killing Thanos. I'm like, doesn't matter because that's a different timeline versions of them. But that part just, I'm like, that just doesn't. Add doesn't up. make sense. No, I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. In terms oh. of story, it did make sense. Yeah. Um, another thing that I didn't have a problem with, per se, but kind of was just scratching my head about was the fact that, um, like, the whole Vormir thing. Um, so, yeah, Black Widow and Hawkeye slash Ronin are basically going, went to Vormir to go get the Soul Stone, but one of them must sacrifice themselves to, in order to get the Soul Stone. Literally, this film was the pinnacle for both of them. Mm -hmm. I have not seen Scarlett Johansson. I was going to say Scarlet Witch. I didn't see Scarlett the way she has been in Black Widow at all until this movie. Like, this was the pinnacle of her career. And then seeing Jeremy actually act in this film was really well done. And mm -hmm. for you to kill off one of them was just like... I had a couple weird things with that where... Uh, first off, what happens when Cat puts the Soul Stone back? Is he just going to give it to Red Skull, his arch enemy? Um, or is he just going to throw it down at the bottom? I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, also, they would have known that one of them had to die when they went there. Because I thought Nebula knew. What, but Nebula didn't say how. Nebula knew how, though. She said that she murdered my sister at Vormia, but she, didn't, she doesn't know how she, he murdered his sister. She tells them uh, what because when uh, they're like, "Where's Gamora?" and she's like, "He he went to Vormir with Gamora and he came back with a Soul Stone." Like so, she it was but pretty she obvious. She kind of she that all right. So I get you, but the thing is, this this is again with the logic part. She alludes to it, but she technically in the movies doesn't know what happened. All she knows is he killed my sister. He has a Soul Stone. He murdered my sister in Vormir. I don't know to what extent, but he was clearly sad about it though, because he he was being brain like Mantis controlled, and he was like he was upset. Like I agree, yeah, I don't but know. again, you gotta take leaps at that part. Again, I like I said, the logic doesn't make sense, but you're sitting there saying, yeah, Nebula kind of knows, but she doesn't really to the full extent know. That's why everybody was like, so Thanos went and killed his sister. I mean, killed his daughter, and got a Soul Stone. Was she trying to fight him? I don't know. Whatever. We'll see what happens when we get to Vormir. And then that happens. You know? So that's why I was... That's why I was just kind of upset about it. I was just like, y'all could have made the logic a little bit better, but whatever. That's besides the point. Um, other than that, I mean, that and the fact that Iron Man's full character arc came in full circle. Mm -hmm. I... I... Was it, I was somewhat sad. I didn't cry. I was somewhat sad when Iron Man died. I quite cried both times at the funeral scene. Both times I saw this movie. <laughs> I cried at the funeral scene. At the funeral scene when like they're showing everybody like yeah. It's, so it's like right after like they talk to the hologram and they're walking and the music's playing uh, and like they put the thing out to the river and everyone's just, like, every time. Uh, second time I was like I'll be fine this time. Nah, same thing. Um, Actually, second time I think I cried more. I don't know why. Like. <laughs> I, I think it was that, and there's also a scene, I think I, I started to tear up a little bit 
at the Vormir scene, which I will tell you the first time I went, the reason I didn't tear up, that's because people were laughing at that scene when they were trying to sacrifice themselves to save the other. People were actually laughing at the movie. But that was that was the most that was one of the sentimental parts of the movie. Like this movie had a lot of moving moments. That's what I was gonna say. That's what I really liked about this one. This one was very sentimental. And that part right there, I hate to say it, I didn't really care for those two really in the entire MCU. But just seeing both of them knowing that they have to, one of them has to sacrifice themselves to get the soul stone mm. and how they're both trying to outdo each other was just so emotional. I was like, oh, God dog it. This is, they went two for two in Vormir. Like, this is sucks. Like, yeah. like in, when Thor, when Thanos, I said Thor, when Thanos kills Gamora, you're like, wow. Damn, he really, he really loved her, but he had to do what he had to do. And you're like, that is sad. Whereas with these two, they're like, we're both willing to sacrifice ourselves for our mm-hmm. families or our loved ones. And I'm going to do whatever it takes. And that last scene where Black Widow's like, it's okay. And she just pull, pushes herself mm-hmm. off the ledge. I was like, no. Damn it. That part. And then just seeing Peter Parker, like when he's talking to Tony, when Tony finally does the snap. Was was pretty damn dumb. I like I said. I I love literally all the callbacks to everything from Cap being in the elevator, just like in uh, Winter Soldier, where you think he's gonna whoop up on the Hydra agents, but he Hail just Hydra. says Hail Hydra and gets the scepter. Um, the on your left that uh, Sam says right before the whole army comes in to help Cap. Also, that scene with Cap I need a painting and the that. army with yeah just the huge like backdrop that is a beautiful picture <laughs> I need somebody in the world somebody in the internet whoever is watching this please make a painting of that and I would love to see it on painting I'll put my Twitter in the description please somebody do that painting because that was a beautiful shot when everybody's sitting there getting ready to fight Thanos mm-hmm. and the children of Thanos and literally what well, we've been waiting on since 2012 Avengers Assemble. I was like, yes, let's go. I will say, I've seen it twice and didn't find out until later. Howard Duck is in the scene where all the army comes in. What? I haven't seen it. Apparently, he's in like the bottom left of the scene. I haven't paid attention to it. I'll have to see it a third time. I'm going to see it a third time to find out if Howard Um, Duck was in it. But yeah, like just all the little nods. I mean, seeing like Ant Man's original helmet back in the 70s. um, There's just so much like. Small little stuff that's referential to the old movies that I was like, yeah, yeah. like I, it's funny because people were like, what do you think? I was like a nine out of ten because I give no movie a perfect score and I don't like doing decimals these days because <laughs> otherwise I do it out of a hundred. Um, but yeah, I was like, and, but for every five Marvel movies, it might go down. For every five Marvel movies you haven't seen, it might go down a point because you wouldn't get, you wouldn't care as much. You wouldn't, you wouldn't care as, as much. much. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have the emotional carriage that we have had. That's why I put this movie at a. 9 out of 10, I want to say also. 4.5 out of 5, yeah. The person behind me, the, in that laughing group, one of them hadn't even seen Infinity War. I was like, why are you here on Thursday night to see this movie? Because I, I, got, I got sent to come here. Asshole. Um, yeah, that was, that was annoying. I will say also, I love the fact that basically, no matter what happened, Thanos still kept his agenda at heart. Well, until the end where he's like, he's like, you, in all my conquests, it's never been personal, but I'm going to enjoy this. Like, I did like, he's like, I'm fucking tired of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's what I was going to say. Like, I love the idea that even though he, because Nebula does something in 2014 where she basically, her and her old self links memories because she's an android. And literally Thanos takes the memories and says, oh, I, I won. I succeed. Dope. And. Not only did I win, I get killed after I won. You know what? Sure. I'm Destiny down. Destiny he, he, he was like, you know what? I'm down. Let's do this again. And this time, I hate to say it. Nah, I hate to say it. This time, I'm going to make sure y'all did. I'm going to kill everybody. I'm going to kill all of y'all and redo a new. Because I thought, in my mind, killing half of y'all, y'all be okay. But you all, you, you, you want to redo what man. I want? Bet. All of y'all are dying. And... I, I loved how they kept Thanos that way because they, I wouldn't want it any other way. And, oh, he was a little bit more ruthless in this one than he mm-hmm. was in the uh, in Infinity War. And um, I just loved how basically I, um, Tony switched the Infinity Gauntlet. I knew that when he made that Iron Man Infinity Gauntlet, 
he made his own just in case. Well, because it's also nanotech, and like so they just absorb into his armor. His armor, which right. we've seen in the past. So, so I was I was like, yes. There, yes. there is one funny thing because I talked about it with a couple people where I don't mind the scene at all. There's just one funny thing about it where when uh, Peter has the gauntlet because they're doing like the football race to throw it in the back of the truck. Um, Captain Marvel comes in, and I, I, I like how he's like, "Hi, I'm Peter Parker," and he's all scared. She's like, "Hi, Peter Parker," and she's like, "You got some for me?" And like, uh, how she gets back up from all the other women of the MCU, but Mantis is there. What is Mantis gonna do <laughs> in this giant battle to help get the gauntlet to where it needs I'm to go? I'm gonna go mind control people. Yeah. I was like, "What, what are you doing, Mantis? Get out of here!" Um, yeah, I thought I thought there's a lot of cool stuff. I also I I love Cap like and the, the Cap that we see today like cursing a lot more like from the very beginning like let's get the son of a bitch to like when you gotta be (laughs) you gotta be shitting me and he fights himself and like when he's i i I still think it's great when he references the first avenge line where he's like i can do this all day and he's like i know i know know. he's like like so frustrated with himself in the past (laughs) he's like oh you so oh you're so annoying but yes i know yes i know i know and then everybody's whole thing now is that's America's ass. Yeah, just like <laughs> yeah, that is America's ass. It's great. Um, it's also cool, like a small nod is like seeing uh, Jarvis the Butler being in the uh, in like taking Howard Stark and driving him around, which is the same Howard Stark actor from Peggy Carter, the TV. Yeah, show. Yeah, the TV so. show. So it's just, that was cool. It was also sad though for me that we didn't get Vision back. Yeah, I didn't. I thought that was weird because I mean. He's just a robot. Like, you could rebuild him. <laughs> but I guess they, I, I was thinking, I was like, why don't they just, I, I thought about it wrong. Cause like Cap goes back to put the stones back. I'm like, in my head, the stones re-exist in the future now, but technically they still wouldn't because they still get destroyed no matter what. So there is no stones anymore in their timeline. But you still can make vision without the stone. But can you? That's this whole thing is like the stone was like what gave him life. Oh, you're right. Cause that's when they ripped that shit out, he was dead. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I I will say going from here, we talked about an uh, uh, episode a long time ago, about where do they go from here, and I it makes me more than ever wish they wouldn't have wasted Ultron, because Ultron could be a great villain to set up from here, where you could have like Tony, who's dead, make robots to replace him, and one of those gets corrupted, et cetera, et cetera. But now, Still could be. But, but I don't want to redo Ultron now. I agree. You can't redo Ultron. So now it comes to the fact that who, like I said, who... Are you going to allude to next? I feel like you got to go to Doom. You have to go to Doom. I, yeah, because I, I honestly, I don't think I really ever want them to do Galactus. Because Galactus is so big, most of the people are going to look like ants fighting him. Or are going to have Galactus be small and just going to be a weird fight? I don't know. Like, Well, they say they're alluding to having Silver Surfer in the, in the MCU. So Yeah, is... Galactus Silver Surfer went so great last time we saw him on screen <laughs> together. <laughs> Fantastic. I agree or... with you, but... Kevin Feige has said he likes the idea of bringing Silver Surfer into the MCU. So, unfortunately, we're going to get him. We're going to get the Silver Surfer. They should have done that in Ragnarok. But they didn't have the rights to him. They didn't have the rights to him. Hey, at least we're getting Adam Warlock, though. Are we? James Gunn is coming back. He, we, he wouldn't have gave us Warlock. He wouldn't have gave us Adam if he didn't allude to it. I really think Guardians 3 at this point is going to be the search for Gamora. Or, I, I agree, yeah. but I think Adam Warlock, to give you some kind of conflict, Adam Warlock is going to go out there and try to come fight fight them, and then he gets the, you know, he gets the change of heart, and he's going to go fight for, you know, Avengers. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's weird to see. That's still going to be the worst part, is, like, the next, like, 50, 10 to 15 Marvel movies are going to feel so flat, because we got this big, crazy climax that we've all been waiting for, and now it's going back to not that. Well, we gotta now. What they have to do is now. What they have to do is play, ca- not catch up, but they gotta rebuild the feelings that we got with this first saga. Now they have to find somebody that we have to linger to, not linger to, but somebody we gotta care yeah. for and like put emotions in. And the only person right now, to be honest, that we actually have put emotions in is Spider Man. Yeah, it's just I don't know. I'm I'm worried because Spider Man's still like a pseudo partnership with Sony. So it's like how deep and Sony can, can literally invest. just be like, "Yep, exactly." I do think it's cool right now that uh, it looks like the Avengers. Oh, also, I want to say I love Brie Larson with the short hair. Um, yes, the Avengers is more or less being led by a female 
uh, with Brie Larson and a black male with Captain America, Sam. I was like, that's a pretty cool leading is that we went from three white dudes to a woman and a black guy, so. Well, and, well, I don't think Black Panther is going to be really any Avengers like that. But the only thing is, is because fans are so divided about whole Captain Marvel thing, because some people, like some people at work, hates Captain Marvel. I'm just, I don't understand where the hate is coming from. She's a woman. <laughs> okay, all right. That's, I'll that's say fair. That, that's people fair. Like the, people are like, oh, she has no charisma. I'm like, to be fair, I mean, Thor for the first, like, majority of the movies had no charisma. Right. Like in Total Ragnarok, no one gave a damn about Thor's charisma. I still didn't care for I still didn't care for Thor until Ragnarok. Yeah. So. Let's be honest. But I think Carol is gonna do a better job of leading them than like I hate to say it, Tony and Cap did. Mm -hmm. But it's gonna be it's it's gonna be an interesting new chapter where they go. And like I said, I don't think we're gonna get a movie for about another two, three years maybe. Mm -hmm. But at least we'll be able to have this time of rest. And then we're going to pick back up in about 2021, I think. 2021 or 2022. So it'll be interesting to see. By then, hopefully we'll get some news if X-Men or F4 will be in it. Give them enough space to stay away. But we'll see. Yeah, it's, it's a weird thing about how would you introduce mutants. Because it's like they either always existed or you make them exist all of a sudden. Both of those are weird. At but this again, point. Scarlet Witch is a mutant technically, so how are you gonna explain Scarlet Witch not having a her father around who died by I Tony don't Sagasso? I don't think Magneto and Scarlet Witch are gonna exist at the same time, just because you've already killed killed off Quicksilver. I don't think that they'll have them ever interact. Hmm. I think, the, or you could, or what you could do, if I'm a writer and I and we got wrote ourselves in a corner, what I would do is, Magneto realizes that Quicksilver is dead, uses that as fuel for the Brotherhood of Mutants. Yeah, but here's the thing: I think it's gonna be a long time before we see mutants because they do want to distance themselves from this current X Men franchise. I agree, but as a writing, st I'm saying from a writing point of view, it's kind of stupid if you don't do that. But we'll see. I think what they might have to do is kind of like a reverse House of M where Scarlet Witch freaks out and makes mutants. We'll see if that happens. Hmm. <laughs> James is somewhat shooting his I'm shot. I'm scheming. I'm feeling it. Once I said I was like, cool. Yeah, yeah, I was like, James is over here scheming and shooting shots. But, I mean, is there anything else you want to talk about in terms of spoilers with in-game? Uh, no, I mean, I think... It's one of those movies, like I said, if for every five movies you haven't seen, you'll probably care less. But I think for someone who's seen literally every one, it is a great... It was a great send-off. Yeah, it was fine. It, like, it, they did fan service without making it feel cringy, uh, yes. which is hard to do. Um, yeah, I mean, wish I wish they would have not gone with time travel because time travel makes everything weird. But it also seems like an easy cop-out sometimes. Yes. Uh, there's some... Some, I, I want to see all the deleted scenes for this movie because I feel like there's a lot that was probably left on the cutting room table. But overall, I, I loved it. I mean, it, it this is the best Avengers movie. Yeah, it still doesn't probably make my top five Marvel movies just because it doesn't stand alone that well. See, I'm right at five, right at five with Endgame. I like my movie to make sense no matter where you are in the watching of like the stuff. So I, it's it's hard for me to put like, like yeah. Uh, like, like I think you watch Thor Ragnarok on its own, you get it. You watch Black Panther on its own, you get it. You watch Winter Soldier, you more or less get it. This, you would have to see a lot of other stuff to really get it. Uh, so it's like, it, it's probably one of my favorites, but I wouldn't say it's one of the best just because of... Because of where, it, um, because of what you have to do yeah, to, it's, in it's, order to get it. It's, you have to watch all of it. <laughs> fair, 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 fair. Okay. I'd have to somewhat agree. Uh, but tell us what you think of Endgame. Tell us your favorite moments of Endgame. Tell us what your thoughts and mix of it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, turn on notifications if you haven't. Follow us both on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. Just go watch Endgame. Make and probably skip Dark Phoenix. Probably. Skip Dark Phoenix. Skip Dark Phoenix so we can get the X-Men in the MCU. Please also do. Also skip Sonic the Hedgehog so we can get him in the MCU too. <laughs> <laughs> like how we have Howard the Duck. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Sonic vs. Howard the Duck. That's the perfect sequel. Oh, wow. We, did we just make a movie? No. <laughs> but, 
other than that, guys, thanks for joining us and stay tuned.